To begin a new project in Sonnet Light, we go to the Edit Project button, select it with the left mouse button, and choose New Geometry. The Sonnet Project Editor then comes up, and I want to point out a couple of things that will be very helpful to you as you build projects. One of them is the toolbar, which has a number of shortcut buttons to actions that you will use from time to time. The other thing which is very helpful is this handy Quick Start Guide, and we're going to use the Quick Start Guide to kind of bring us through the process of developing and analyzing a project. We're going to draw this project manually in Sonnet, so I select Next. Now the Quick Start Guide has a series of steps with check marks next to the things that we've already completed. The first thing we want to do is choose the units. If I click on this hyperlink on the Quick Start Guide, it gives me information where to find that. Select Circuit Units. Since I'm already going to draw in mills and the circuit is already set to mills, we'll keep these settings. And the next step is to specify dielectric layers. So Circuit, Dielectric Layers, and here we have a stack up of the dielectrics inside of the sonnet analysis box. Think of this as corresponding to the layers of dielectric between the very floor of the module and the ceiling. And remember that the sonnet analysis is enclosed inside of a six-sided metal box. So there are metal planes below and above this stack of, in this case, two zero-thickness dielectrics. I want to create a structure that uses 25 mil alumina. So I will select the bottom dielectric and I'll click the Edit button. There's a dielectric library with Sonnet Light. If I click on Select Dielectric from Library, I can find a series of popular materials and commonly used materials in microwave work. I'll choose Alumina 99.5% Purity and all of the data is filled in for this dielectric layer. I only need to fill in the thickness. We'll choose 25 mils. Here you can see the information has been filled in. Above my 25 mils of dielectric, I'd like to have, let's say, a quarter of an inch of air. So I edit, enter the name air, and give it a thickness of 250 mils. Now my box is defined in terms of the dielectrics that I'll be using in my project. I click OK. Now let's just do a quick look at what this uh, box looks like. Here on your toolbar in your project is an item that looks like a little cube. It's called View 3D. And if we select it, you can see here our analysis box. 25 mils of dielectric on the bottom, 250 mils of air on top. What's the next step in the Quick Start Guide? Well, specify cell and box size. Under Circuit Box, I will find these settings. First of all, I'd like my substrate size to be about a half an inch on each side. So we'll choose 500 mils in each direction and we'll simulate using a 5 mil grid size. This grid size sets the distance between these individual snap points. Now again, looking at our box, you can see how it's changed the size of our sonnet analysis box. It's time to specify metal types that we might draw from, from in order to create the circuit. I will choose Circuit, Metal Types, and up comes the window that shows me the types of metal that have been defined for our conductors to this point. So I'm going to add another type, and I'm going to search from our library for the properties appropriate for gold. I select OK, and we'll use a 0.1 thick process for gold. Last, metal for new polygons will be set to use this gold definition. Now it's time to add polygons. There are several ways to do this. You'll find an extensive group of items that you can add under Tools, Add Metalization, and a whole collection of items that can be defined parametrically. I'll show you the parallel lines, for example, and you can simply enter the parameters to drop them. However, in this case, we're just going to use a couple of buttons on our toolbar which will be useful for us. Add Rectangle or Add Polygon. I'm going to use Add Rectangle. I'm going to click the first vertex for my rectangle to create a through line through this project and then I stretch it all the way across. Now watch the bottom, the status bar location on the bottom. I'm going to go from end to end and make it 25 mils wide and I'll pull it down to about the center of the box, or approximately. Now this is going to be a double stub tuner, so I'm going to add another polygon somewhere right about here, and draw a stub that is again about 25 mils long. 
I'm sorry, 25 mils wide, and then I'm going to copy it and paste it to make a copy of it, and we'll put a copy of this stub at about that location. That is about everything I need for a double stub tuner, and looking at my 3D view, you can see the placement of this inside of my box. The next step is going to be to add ports. On my toolbox, this little port symbol gives me a shortcut to add the get into the add port mode, and you can see the icon has changed. I'll click on this polygon edge right on this box wall to turn that into a port. Now this side of this through line is right now grounded because it's touching the side wall of the sonnet analysis box. It's actually accessing ground at that point. I lift that and put a port on that location now to create a two port project. Now maybe I want to have reference planes. In this case I would like S parameters to be normalized to a connection point right at the first discontinuity or where the first stub connects from each end. I do that by using circuit, reference planes, and for the left side I will use a fixed reference plane length and use my mouse to place it. I put my cursor right at that discontinuity and now you can see an arrow indicating the reference plane now uh, and showing you how much of the line will be de-embedded or removed from the analysis results when the simulation is completed. Let's repeat it for the right side. A fixed line length to the location where the first stub connects. I click OK to finish this action and there you can see our reference planes are put in place. The next step now the quick start guide tells us to use analysis setup and we will use an adaptive band sweep which requires us only to specify a start frequency of 1 gigahertz in this case and a stop frequency 10 gigahertz. I'll also ask the simulator to compute the current density at each simulation point. I click OK. Now I can save the project, and so I'll save it as Stub Tuner. We're ready to analyze. Before I do that, however, it may be useful for me to know whether this is going to fit in the requirements of Sonnet Light. Remember, if you register Sonnet Light, there is a 16 megabyte uh, limitation. The Estimate Memory option is very useful here. So we'll select Analysis, Estimate Memory and the software tells me that I'll only need four megabytes of RAM to solve this problem. I can look at the discretization for this if I want to, and there you can see it. In the Sonnet Light project window, you'll see this little EM button. Press the EM button to begin the process of analysis, and the status monitor will come up and give you information on how the simulation is progressing. This simulation will require about seven points in order to complete a 361 frequency adaptive sweep. Once it's finished, we can look at the results by clicking on the View Response button on the Status Monitor. And here you can see we've created kind of a neat little notch filter using our double stub tuner. Here's the input reflection coefficient, here's the through component. You can output this data for use in other simulation tools if you wish by selecting Output and bringing up the appropriate output combinations, S parameter, Y parameter, Z parameter, and the format that you like. Now let's take a look at the current density information that was computed. To do that, I click on the View Current button. Press View Current, and here you can see a top view of the current density at whatever frequency you wish to view. And these are the adaptively sampled frequencies. Let's look at something in the stop band. Here you can see the energy being constrained to the first stub or somewhere in the passband where you can see current passing through the structure readily. This information can also be animated if we select Animate Settings, select Time Settings, and choose an appropriately quick frame duration, and Animation, Animate View. Select the uh, Continuous Play button and press the Play button, and here you can see an animation of the current as the waveform, actually as the phase of the input port is swept around the phase circle. Frequency also can be swept if you want to see how the animation progresses as we change frequency. 